Welcome to Wayne's World Studio. My name is Wayne. Today I'm really excited. I'm uh, meeting with Kelvin Wong to showcase us with a lot of different cameras. With instant camera, uh, half frame camera, point and shoot camera, a folding 35, a folding 35 millimeter camera, a translucent reflex camera, and my favorite 4x5 camera. Kelvin, tell us about this, this camera, collection of your cameras. How did you start it? Um, sort of about five years ago and um, kind of just kept on buying things from the thrift store and just I, I think I bought more broken cameras than uh, working cameras in general, which I guess everyone kind of falls into the habit of uh, doing. Um, the, the more broken cameras you buy, you kind of get better at fixing things. So uh, eventually I got a little bit of um, kind of like better at fixing broken cameras, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I know you, you also fix cam, which is wonderful. Not too, too many of us can fix a cam because when you take them apart, it's, it's quite a bit of, like a swatch, uh, you know, like a watch. Yeah. It's quite a bit mechanical in there. Let's tell us about the uh, instant camera, which uh, like this one here. Okay, uh, so this is a Polaroid SX-70. It takes um, the old Polaroid film. Uh, a lot of people think that they don't make the film anymore, but the Impossible Project still makes the film. Um, it's not as... Uh, the colors are not the same as the old um, camera, like the, uh, oh sorry, the old film. It's not as uh, sharp. Compared to the Polaroids. Yeah, com compared to the Polaroids, because they're still in the testing phase apparently. Mm -hmm. um, but this one's uh, like an SLR, so you look through the lens right here, look right through here, and um, there's a mirror on the inside. So what you see through this lens is what you get. Um, is, yeah. is that different than a uh, different model of the Polaroid, or this is kind of style um, for this year? For that year, this uh, this Polaroid is just an SLR Polaroid. They, uh, they did make um, a one that you look right through, um, so it had no uh, focus range, so right. it's a little harder to focus. So it's basically uh, almost like um, a viewfinder without range. So you're just picking the, the range and just shooting, shooting blind. Them. Yeah, I would say. How did you start it on all those cameras? I mean, it's like that's quite a different different style camera. You got folding, you know, instant camera, and you got a half camera. Was this something that you you just came overnight and just wake up in the morning and say, hey, I want to pick up some cameras? No, it kind of started like, kind of like addiction. You buy one and it's like, oh, you, you go and you uh, see another one. It's like, oh, I got to have that one. And then you go out and it's like, I don't have this one. I should buy that one too. So eventually your collection just gets bigger and bigger. You couldn't do that with a girlfriend. <laughs> a wife, I would say. <laughs> okay, next one. Next one. This one's a half frame. Uh, so it takes a uh, 35 millimeter uh, film, but instead of taking a full frame, it takes half. So on a, what was it, uh, 36, was it? 36 shots in a, in a roll of film, you get 72 exposures on one roll of film. Um, yeah, so on the inside, you see how it looks a little different. It's like a little uh, rectangle, but instead of going this way, it's going up and down there. Uh, how old this one would be? Uh, this one was, I believe it was the 60s. I, I don't know the exact dates. Uh, I kind of forgot to read up on it. <laughs> I, I remember probably because uh, my dad have some of those small uh, pictures, really small ones, and I always wonder how, how did they go into such a small print. Mm -hmm. So I guess it must be something like this camera here. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a cost-saving measure back then yes. when film was expensive. Uh, the cool thing about this camera, it has a 1.4 lens, so it's one of the fastest um, half-frame lenses. On, a, on one of the half frame cameras ever made. It looks really new also. Yeah. It's really good shape on that one there. What that one worth right now in the market? Um, it comes up on eBay very rarely and it goes around 600, 400 around there. 400, 600. That was value really well. Yeah. Okay, the next one. All right, the next one is a Pelicardia Mini uh, or a Tiara. Uh, it's made by Fujifilm and it's a wide, uh, wide angle point and shoot camera. Um, it's actually one of the nicer lenses I've heard online. I've read reviews on it. I've only shot one roll of uh, film through this one, so I haven't really had uh, much experience with this camera yet. But it's really cool. <laughs> well, how wide is this one, you say? Uh, 2.8. No, oh, sorry, sorry, not 2.8, sorry. Uh, 28 millimeters. 28 millimeters. Yeah. Nice size. For a small right? point shoot. And the point shoot, the next one you have? Uh, the next point shoot is one I fixed. Uh, <laughs> the flash wouldn't um, go off, and the uh, button was actually pressed down. It's a Pentax uh, 35 AF, 
Um, it has a Pentax uh, 35 2.8 lens on it, and it's uh, also um, like a cult camera, I would say. Okay. So a lot of people like this camera. Um, there is a better version with the um, uh, winder actually built in. This one is a thumb wind, so it's all man um, a manual wind cord, but it's still a point and shoot. So there's no um, exposure comp or anything. There's a set your ISO on the bottom 100 to 400 and basically a backlight uh, 1.5 like, uh, compensation okay, wow yeah. it's pretty advanced uh, a little bit I guess a little bit, yeah. one, eh? it's a little bit easier I guess <laughs> and next one's a folding camera that's yeah. a pretty cool this one was um, pre-World War II and it's a Kodak Retina with a Xenar lens uh, it's not a range finder it's just a viewfinder so uh, again you would have to uh, estimate your distance. Say that tree over there is about, let's say, three meters or ten meters away. You would set your distance, get your exposure through a light meter, because uh, there's no light meter built into this camera, because um, back then they didn't have built-in light meters. Yep. And um, point and shoot with the distances. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, got to be pretty accurate on that one there. Yeah. You got to know your stuff. Yeah. That's for sure on that one there. Because nowadays we all have the rangefinders and the split prisms. But back then they were a little better at estimating uh, distances. I noticed that viewfinder is really small on this one. Maybe yes. Take a look at it. Wow, that's that? small. We'll take a look at it later on. Yeah. I'll close up. That is small. I'm talking about it's almost like the size of two pigs. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But uh, when you look through it, it actually looks pretty big. Like, um, I guess the, uh, what you call it? If you're wearing glasses, it's a little harder to look through. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Alright, the next one is a twin lens print. Yep, this one's a TLR, uh, twin lens reflex, and this one's a Yashica uh, 635. Um, this one takes medium format, so again, it's one step higher. So we're going from half frame, 35mm, um, to about uh, 120 film. Mm -hmm. uh, so 120 film is about, I think, double the size of 35mm. Uh, uh, for this one, you would shoot through the top. So you look through, and this top lens would be the lens you would view um, all the um, uh, your subject with. Yeah, the focus is on the, the actually taking a picture is going to be on the bottom one. Yeah, so bottom lens is the one taking pictures. So you'll never get um, a viewfinder blackout like an SLR camera. The yeah, only thing I think uh, I, I do have one of this camera, the twin lens uh, reflex, is that if you have shooting a flower or anything, it's about this. So it's really close up to it. You make sure that you line up a little bit higher, yeah. because or else the angle of photograph is just a slightly different. So you really have to point up a little bit more how you're gonna shoot. So yeah. uh, that'll be fun. It's uh because they don't have built-in parallax correction. You would have to uh, um, put your subject a little bit lower on your viewfinder. Uh, some cameras do have parallax correction on the top. They have an extra line in the viewfinder, um, but this one does not. Oh, sounds good. Well, you're, you're the viewfinder looks pretty bright mm -hmm. because I have the roll effects. It's, it's really dark. It's a little older one, and it's get really dark. Mm -hmm. here. Let's take a look at the four x five. All right, the four That's by five. Line. The biggest format I own, <laughs> <laughs> and this one is the largest format that we have here. It's about I think four or five times the size of um, one twenty film. Okay, so the, the big up um, upside of having a bigger format is. Uh, you get a nicer picture when you enlarge because you don't have to enlarge as much the grain won't be as prominent uh, for this one um, I bought it off someone off Craigslist and uh, I got it fairly cheap it was actually quite a good deal uh, but right now I have um, a Polaroid back so the great thing about uh, 4x5 is we can uh, switch out the backs for either a Polaroid back or oh, I didn't have it out of it let me grab it also called uh, something called uh, sheet film holders, which take 4x5 film. Um, for that, you can um, have something called like a ground glass right here, and this pops up, and you will look right through the lens. So what you see through on this ground glass is what comes up on the uh, on the film itself. Um, porters, they would handhold these because we have um, a rangefinder on the top. So basically, they would walk around with these big flash bulbs, and they're really bright flash bulbs. And they would focus just like this. Hold it right here. Put one of these in, or one of these would already be loaded in there, ready to go. 
ready to pull the dark slide off, set it, go like this, shoot it, pop it in, flip it around and get another shot. You get two shots in each frame holder, that's yeah. all yeah, yeah, two shots. Two shots in each frame holder and uh, back then I believe they just took the, um, the negatives and just uh, contact printed it right on the newspaper. So uh, that, that's why 4x5 was king back then. Um, less grain and easier to shoot. Until uh, 35 came along and um, it was nice and easy and you get faster shots. Yeah. If all this camera, which one you really find enjoyable shooting? Like, you know, I guess each, each camera have its purpose. Yeah. You know, what type of camera that you like to shoot with, say, a daily? Daily? You know, you go out, walk around in the park or you want to shoot? I, I used to bring along um, SLR all the time, but then it got stopped bulky and um, I just carried around too many lenses. So right now I'm actually really digging the uh, point shoots. They're really easy to just pop them out, you just shoot. Built in flash, just get the moment, like, just like right in the moment right there. Mm -hmm. And you can also get, um, some point shoots are really nice. I didn't bring it today, but I have a, uh, is it um, not a Yashica? I think it's a Yashica T3. Has a Zeiss lens in it. Oh. Yeah, very nice. It sounds great. Do you have any tips for us? Tips. Uh, if you're buying a camera used, make sure you bring batteries. Cause I, I've had ten cameras. I didn't bring batteries, and the shutter did not work. <laughs> yeah. And make sure um, when you guys are buying cameras, check the um, the battery compartment for corrosion. If there's old batteries in there and it's all corroded, you're gonna spend a lot of time. Just digging all that corrosion so the battery actually makes a um, nice firm contact. Uh, sometimes the battery just burns right through the board and the camera's toast. Oh, sounds yeah. great. Well, thank you, Calvin. I think we, we learned a lot today of this camera. Definitely I did. You know, I usually shoot with a little bit more like a twin flex uh, camera or even the folding 120. Uh, this is a 35, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, just got myself four four by five with a studio. I'm looking forward to shoot more onto it. Anyway, this is all wrapped up and we'll talk to you next time.